Hey y'all, this is Steve with Beta Finance, and I just wanted to show off, this is going to be a shorter video, I just wanted to show off uh, my first uh, flesh and blood purchase, which uh, that's, you know, nothing, nothing, you know, crazy, you know, I didn't get like an alpha box or a heart of Findale or something like that, but uh, you know, this is special to me because this kind of represents the beginning of, of uh, something new, um, something new I'm trying, you know, in my life, and uh, I'm excited about it. Um, so I guess, you know, this is kind of just going to be a random, more random video. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, right off the bat, I, I, I guess, I, I guess I want to say, like, you know, I don't think, I don't necessarily think that this is gonna be, like, I don't think the the this uh, the unlimited printing is gonna like be four thousand dollars. That would be crazy because, you know, they're probably gonna print these for at least a couple of years, right? My only hope with this is that um, I can, I bought this at basically, I spent like 127, I looked at, at my receipt. So this was 127, so that was like um, shipping and handling, part of that. So still, Still not bad, and honestly, I'm I'm seeing like Arcane Rising for like about one nineteen a box plus shipping and handling. Um, these some place see okay some places are doing these for like one fifty, which at this point that I think that's a bit bad deal. I I think that's a bad deal like. If you, like, if you can get it for, like, 120 that's, seems pretty decent to me. Um, and then obviously anything lower is, is great, like, because, you know, the MSRP of these are, are about 80 bucks, right? So, um, 120 is still, like, $40 markup. Um, that's like, what is that? You're, you're adding half, you know? That's like a 50% markup. So, um, but that's about, that's about the average price to go on TCG player. That's about the average price you're going to see is about, about, um, one, 119 and then plus shipping and handling. So what are my long-term goals? Well, one, I'm playing catch up because I want to, I want to get the unlimited product of uh, Flesh and Blood, uh, of, <laughs> of Welcome to Wraith, of Arcane Rising, and I'm starting. I'm starting out small. I'm starting out small. I I'm just starting with like four boxes of each, um, and that's you know that's not a lot, <laughs> but uh, I'm just trying to. Do something that I feel comfortable um, in. I'm trying. I'm just trying to get comfortable or do something that I set up a position I feel comfortable in. There we go. Um, and long term, you know. So I, if you okay. So so a lot of this is dependent on the heroes being cycled out. And I think it's um, once a hero gets 10 or 11, like, honorary points, um, I, I, I'm, I'm still learning all this stuff, so I have to, I don't have, I, I want to get more specific, but I'm doing the best I can. So once a hero gets a certain amount of uh, competition points, then they are cycled out. Are they retired, right? 
And so I, I'm curious to see how that affects the unlimited printing. Because one of the other, one of the reasons I'm optimistic about flesh and blood is the fact that, um, you know, they don't just cycle out whole sets like clockwork, you know, they, it's just the hero is competitive, competitively retired. I believe so. I, I, that's from my understanding, that's how it works. It's like, you know, welcome to Wraith as a set is going to stick around for a while. And then, um, you know, but a hero might get axed, but that means like functionally you have, you still have all the heroes from welcome to Wraith and Plus, you have all the generic cards, right? So, I really like that because it just makes the utility um, of your cards. It it, it or um, it just in, it just adds to the longevity of these cards, you know, um, for, for players. Uh, so that's 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 an improvement I see over Magic. You know, um, because, you know, magic is kind of set in its ways as far as that's concerned, because unless they significantly or severely change like the format or how you structure a deck, um, it just kind of doesn't accommodate that kind of uh, uh, rotation. But obviously flesh and blood was like that, or is set up like that out of the gate. Um, okay, so what are my thoughts on, like, where this stuff is going? I, I mean, I pretty much outlined my plan in my first video, but just as a refresher, I'm basically trying to use boxes to buy boxes. Um, so... And I and it and it's gonna take about about like a two to three year cycle to like be able to start using unlimited boxes to purchase first edition booster cases. <laughs> Pardon me. So, um, but and also we'll kind of have to see because right now I mean it's so technically the game has been out for uh, over a year, um, but not by much. Oh, well, wait, it's had all of 2020. So it had October, um, October, November, December, right? Then 13 months or 15 months in January, 16 months. So it's had like a year and four months, um, I can do math. So, uh, so it's been on for a year and four months. And if you look at like, they have the, uh, all the current heroes that are available and their, the points they have on their website. So you can keep track of that. Another great thing, you know, that's something small, but that's something important. You know, you want to, I feel like you want your players informed and so they can make good, everyone can make good decisions. So it'll be interesting to see how the hero rotation affects uh, print runs because my, I'm curious to see like, so is it gonna be the case that like so long as all the he so long as heroes from that is is it, it going to be the case that so long there are heroes from a set that they're going to continue to print it and maybe it's maybe it's it's going to be more like okay on the first unlimited printing of Welcome to Wraith was um, was like x amount of boxes and then maybe 
but maybe not the most that they are willing to print. And now, now that they've seen that there's like a big demand for it and it's growing, maybe like the next printing of the next restock of the Unlimited is maybe a little bit more, you know? And then, you know, you'll see if, if that's the case, you'll hopefully see like maybe the price come down like a few dollars or something like that, or at least just stay the same where it's at. Um, okay, but then after that, does it become, do they kind of, uh, oh gosh, sorry, do they kind of ramp it down, you know, like over time? So it's like, really, so basically they print it to a point that is functional for players. So like, there's enough supply that it's never becomes extravagant. Like with, so then within these like next two years, there's enough supply that it's, it's affordable. And, um, and then, and then it's like, when, how many does it, as soon as one hero is retired from a set, do they, is, are they going to stop printing it? Because technically you're kind of like, well, okay, I know. Okay. So, so if you, if you, if you retire a hero, do you stop printing it because part of your product is like competitively no longer legal, you know, or as long as there's like more than half of the heroes remaining, do they keep printing the unlimited uh, sets or unlimited prints? Um, so we'll just kind of see that and that will also determine future price because, um, you know, like now there's this figure going around, which makes, I mean, I, I'm not saying that like, uh, I'm skeptical of it. it makes sense. It's not, it seems like a good estimate that like there's 22,000 of the alpha boxes because, uh, James White said there's like 500 or there's half as many alpha, uh, hearts of Findale. And, uh, is that, is that the card? I'll feel really dumb if that's not what it's called. But, um, that, uh, so that means, and there are like 1100 black lotuses. So there's 550 hearts, alpha hearts, and there's only one fabled per set. So there, uh, therefore, and you, and you can only get, um, your, the chances is, is one fabled in 40 boxes because it's like 960 or 940 packs divided by 24 is, is uh, 40. And so five, uh, 550 times 40 is 22,000, something like that. Um, so, you know, but that's not going to be the case with unlimited. I'm sure there's probably over 22,000 of unlimited stuff, right? Um, so that, that big X factor right now is how are the print runs for unlimited going to be? And I think that's influenced by hero rotation and you know, how many of the cards in the set are actually tournament legal, you know? So overall though, you know, I would just, eh, oh, and then it seems like the hero points. So that's, that's actually what you have to figure out. So you have to kind of look at the frequency of tournaments that where you can accrue hero points or I'm not I'm calling them hero points, but I, I think it's like honorary points or, so, or let, something like that. And then um, there's like so many heroes. I think there's maybe like eight or six or eight. Um, and so, 
if you need 11, if you need like 10 to 11 points, and there's six to eight heroes, and there's a clear, like so far, like I think two of those heroes have points, and none of the other heroes do. So maybe those are like the kind of uh, the broken heroes right now. Um, but, you know, there's, it's, this is like, these, this is the exciting part because it's like, it's like, man, like, how impactful is having a fabled card in your deck? How many, like, what, what is the price range of like a top tier deck right now? You know, um, uh, like, is, is the meta right now pretty well determined or is this just a lack of brain power meaning you know the player base still needs to grow and the research there's re still research to do to like find out like what is what is optimal like like you know god like there's like pitch pitch value optimization right there is um Optimi optimizing your uh, your chain, like like uh, being all the different combo potential, right? Um, and and like cycling through your deck. So uh, and, and like you know, I don't know. There's just so many little tweaks you can do. Different. You you obviously have, you have like equipment setups and your heroes, and then. It just seems like really a lot of uh, a lot of nuance to be had. So it'll be interesting to see how how this game progresses. Um, all right, so pretty much uh, I've got I've got my first flesh and blood box. I'm really excited about it. I hope to get more in the future, and um, I hope to be eventually a place where, you know, well, so yeah, so I'm just going to see, I, I hope basically in a couple years, I spent 120, if I could get like, I don't know, like, if I could get 150, like maybe in a couple years, 150 makes sense, but 150 doesn't make sense right now. But like, yeah, if, if it's like anywhere between like the 150, 160, range that's good well yeah because i would want to make i guess i would, i ideally would like to make 40 dollars back off of it or something but i don't know i you know um rudy uh at alpha investments he he's he's saying that like he doesn't think that the unlimited stuff is investable i'm not sure uh, i i i I'm not sure how to take that, and I think you could take it two ways. Like, I think he's either saying that it's, it's, well, it's definitely not alpha. That is for sure. That's a given. Does he mean that it doesn't have any longevity as far as, like, holding on to it for, like, 20 years? You know, like, uh, if you, because, like, I could definitely see that if you got an alpha box of flesh and blood, and it takes off, and do, and and then it's the it, you were in a whole like Magic the Gathering situation where like okay it's uh it's 2019 and then it's 20 uh, cut to 2039 and like like more than half of Alpha has been opened and now there's like maybe like a thousand boxes out there or something or you know. 5,000, I don't know, and then it's like, yeah, buddy, that's, that's going to be something, with, um, with the unlimited stuff, maybe it's gonna, it, maybe, if, I, okay, I feel like, it may, I feel like even with the unlimited stuff, wow, so, so then I, I mean, I don't know, so like, so I think when he says it's not investable, investable, it, meaning that like, it's not like long term. It's it's always got to compete with alpha, and it's uh, and it's just not as, it's just not going to be that kind of valuable. Because um, also you know like 
you only get the cold foils and first edition stuff. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe maybe the box will be. I wonder how much like a. Uh, I wonder how much an unlimited uh, card of Findale goes for, because I feel like that might be the um, long-term value of, of these boxes. So, Heart of Findale, or Findale, Findale, yeah, Heart of Findale, Unlimited. Um, so Channel Fireball, Channel Fireball does an unlimited, well, uh, yeah, Channel Fireball does an unlimited foil for Heart of fin Findale for 720. Um, do fabled cards like only come in foil? That probably doesn't seem right. Um, let me try to find. Yeah, all I'm seeing is rainbow foil for unlimited hard to find nails. So maybe. Um, yeah, let me see. Hard to find Dale, unlimited, non foil. I don't know. Um, all right, well, I think even maybe. Okay, so let's, I guess, let's just take that value and then actually let's cut, let's like take 50% off of it. So, um, that would be 70, that would be 300, oh, 350, <laughs> uh, 350, 360. Okay, that's what I was initially thinking, that's funny. So, I would say that if Flesh, and, if the Unlimited product has anything, it'd be closer to, and this would be like years and years from now, it would be closer to like $300. Um, but yeah, I, I, that, yeah, that depends on how often heroes are going to get rotated out. Like how frequently is that going to happen and, uh, how long they print, they do, they do the unlimited prints for. Well, and yeah, that's interesting because then it's like how, how many sets are they, how frequently are they going to release sets? Are they going to still do sets for every, uh, are they going to do sets every year for the next couple of years? I don't know. A lot, a lot to think about, a lot to think about. So this was just kind of a ranting video and this is, uh, you know, I'm start, I'm, I'm, you know, since I'm starting out, I'm still kind of trying to figure out what my theme is. Like, you know, what is my what's going to be like the structure of this whole thing. And I think it's, I'm going to, I'll tr maybe try to clean this up a little bit, like make them more concise and with a little bit more intention. But also I think this is kind of, this is kind of what I'm trying to do in this video. It's like, I'm just kind of uh, thinking out loud. I'm thinking out loud. So don't like take this as like any kind of advice. Don't take this as like, um, I'm telling you to like go through this plan. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking out loud and I'm sharing that. I'm just like, uh, kind of, this is more of like, uh, living vicariously, you know, like if you ever wanted to, <laughs> if you've ever wanted to, uh, like in, in start investing in a card game or like a hobby, but you just haven't been able, to, or you've just been r r nervous to, reluctant to, uh, then you can watch me fuck up and and see how it goes. And uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, like I already did a video about how I made a stupid mistake. Um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm in this position where I recently just bought a bunch of different stuff and now I'm trying to sell things to break even and that's bad that's not what you want to do um i shouldn't have done that and now i'm i and now i i want to um 
I need to first, before I buy anything else, no matter what prices I'm seeing, I have to not buy anything else and I have to sell first to break even and then I can I can start but well so this is what you this is what I'm what this is what I need to do first go even right okay once I've done that then I want to go positive right so then I have to sell more okay more things and then this is what you should do you should kind or, or this is what well, okay uh, when I say this is what you should do I'm I'm talking to myself. So um, I, sh I should go positive and then basically find something I want to get, see where it's at, go positive to get to that point, pick it up. And that's, that's going to be my plan. Um, that's, and that's, I'm, I guess in that regard, I'm talking about my like selling magic and stuff. Um, but yeah, so, uh, got my, got my first flesh and blood box. I really like it too. Like just the, the size of it and everything. And it just feels, feels good. It's like, a it's, I like how it's perfectly square and, uh, it's just like a cute little box, you know? I just think that's cool. I, you know, and then it's like, I, I like this, like, I like, I, I like the unlimited flag on it. I just think that's nice. Uh, and they do it on the booster packs. They, you can tell, you can tell that they were, um, very, they're very detail oriented you know they they're very they really understood they really understood what what's wrong with magic and they really improved upon it you know <coughs> they really like i i don't know i think whoever's over there i guess one of them is james white figure out who the rest are but uh they, they, they really got a good head on their shoulders. And I think that's also what gives me confidence in it. It's just that they're just like, create, they're doing something very intelligently. So, um, yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you again.